What's up guys? We got something a little bit different for y'all today. This is a tutorial video actually, and it's going to show y'all how to install the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time randomizer. I went and streamed this this past weekend, did my first randomizer ever, and I had a lot of people coming in asking how to set this up, I want to try it. So I'm like, you know what? Let's make a video about it and answer everyone's questions all at once. First off, there's four things you need. I already have all four installed here, but let me show you how to install each of them. First up, you've got the randomizer itself. First link will take you here. You'll need to go, you'll need to click right here where it says the Ocarina of Time randomizer. You will click this, it will download. While that's downloading, let me go ahead and cover the tracker. Me personally, I'm using the Hero of Time tracker. You can use any tracker. But this one is the cleanest looking in my opinion, and it works really well. Although, well, I'll get to my one problem with this tracker in a bit. And you'll want to install this tracker, because the no install... I forgot what the difference was. But it's always better to install. If you have a tracker download install, it'll immediately download it for you. And the next you'll need to download RetroArch. This is the emulator that you should use for this. Project 64 is the worst emulator for you, fortunately, for this because it continually crashes. I tried. And RetroArch is the e is an easier one to set up, just as easy to set up. So you'll have RetroArch download page. It'll take you here with the link in the description. Get whatever you need for your system. I'm not going to download it. I already have it downloaded and installed. But you're going to click installer for whichever one. In my case is installer 64 bit. Once you have RetroArch installed, the interface is the same across all systems. So you'll still be able to follow the tutorial from there. In this case, it'll be also more in tune with the 10 user. Last link is access to the 1.0 version of the ROM. If you have an Ocarina of Time ROM, that doesn't mean it'll work. It has to be version 1.0. Because I think there's like compatibility issues when it comes to the 1.1 and 1.2, I believe it was. I forgot the exact version numbers. I just know 1.0 is the one that you have to use. That's why I did link it in. Ready? You'll just download that. Google Drive. That. It'll open up another page. And then it'll immediately start. I'm going to cancel that because I already have it right here on the desktop. So, once you have all those installed, you'll open this. I'm using WinRAR, so that's why it's not a regular folder. You'll move this installer to your desktop. Got it right here. You'll run that and install Ocarina of Time Randomizer. That's this right here. We'll get to that in a minute. Hero of Time Tracker, you will install that. Once that's installed, there's your icon. Keep in mind, not all of these icons will appear on your desktop. If they don't show up on your desktop, go to your Start menu. Oops. And recently install apps and all this stuff here. Now, let's deal with setting up the randomizer first. We'll do the randomizer before messing with RetroArch. RetroArch is actually the last thing we're going to do. You no longer need the internet for this, so you close that out. You're going to open up your. Let's. Actually, let me show you the tracker first. Tracker and randomizer are first, so we're going to open up the tracker. Uh, anything you acquire, you just click it. You acquire it immediately, all that good stuff. And with the dungeons, you can pick which you got in which dungeon for each of these. My complaint about this is I don't feel the chest layout here with the numbers is entirely accurate. I could be wrong, they could be, but... I just seem to ignore them, and then once you have the compass in the dungeon, you can see everything anyway. But it is a good reference point. That's really my only complaint about this. Close the tracker out. Now with the randomizer, here is what you do. This is where you create everything. 
Well, maximizing that does absolutely nothing. Okay, so look closely. You'll need to check spoiler log, compress ROM, open forest, open door, get most of Ganon's castle, and gossip stone. This is the, this is what I found to be the best way to do it. I mean, you can configure it differently, but the things that have to be ticked is get most of Ganon's castle and press. I think you can get around not doing open forest and open door, but it makes everything even more random and even more fun. Um, what open forest does is it opens up access to the Deku tree and leaving the forest immediately. Open door of time does saying you can go to adult link. Get most of Ganon's castle is avoids most of avoids key items being in Ganon's castle with the randomizer. I mean, there still be items you may need in Ganon's castle, but you will be able to get to Ganon's castle before needing these items. Because remember, to beat the game, all you need is um something to fight. Ganon with whether it be the hammer or the Vigoran sword and the light arrow. Well, and of course the bow. But yeah, those are the only things you need to defeat Ganon. And getting into Ganon's castle only requires the medallions. I recommend not changing this option for best compatibility. Tunic colors, you can set it whatever you want. You can set a direct one, or you can set it as just random. True randoms kind of weird because sometimes you get some. Most of the time, you get some shade of weird dark shade of brown and just. So I honestly don't recommend true random, but you can if you want. Low health sound effects. So you know you get the beeps when you have low hearts. Well, now you can change it to something else. It could be a softer beep. It could be the rupee sound. It could be the which is the Dora King's movement. Or if you want to be. You can choose Navi's annoying A as your low heart thing. Reset it to random and be at the mercy of your sounds. I left it a default last time, but you can set it to whatever. Um, I don't know about the only insure seat is beatable square. Like, what it means is basically you can beat the game without finding all of the items. Usually, you, you will find most items before the seed. In this case, I think it makes it where you only need to find what you need to complete the game. This is the most basic setup. For base ROM, you're going to select ROM. You're going to navigate to your desktop or to you're going to navigate to wherever you saved the ROM file. In this case, I have it in multiple places, so I'm going to load the one that's in my downloads folder, which is where yours will be when you download it. And you'll open it. You do not need to put a seed number. If you don't put a seed number, you'll get a random seed, which or random, right? Uh, how many ROMs you want to make? Um, I don't really see the point in that because you make the patch wrong, you just copy paste more copies if you want to race with people with the same seed. Then you're gonna hit generate past ROM. Now, this is compressing the ROM. Speaking of which, compressing the ROM is the most neat thing. If you do not compress the ROM, it will crash randomly when pausing or when or when dying. So always compress ROM. That is a must. Go hit generate crash ROM. It uses absolutely as much CPU as the PC will give it. So don't be doing anything else while this runs. This only takes about a minute on most at most. I think mine it only takes like 20 seconds. But depending on how old your CPU is or whatever, it could take up to a minute or two. I'm not gonna hit it because I already already generated it and this would probably kill the recording if I hit generate. So when you're done, when it says it's completed, you'll open output directory. You will have four files. Top file is the uncompressed version. This you only need if you plan to use EverDrive, which is the SD card and 64 card. Um, you'll have to just look elsewhere to find out how to use EverDrive. I don't use EverDrive, so I can't really help you with that. This is the spoiler log. This has tells you where every item in the game is. See? But only look at this when you absolutely have to. Because if you just look at it as a guide, it's not fun. It kills the fun. That's only there for in worst case scenario. 
you are stuck, you don't know where to go, you can open up the file, find, find the item you're looking for, say in this case, Lens of Truth. Oh, it just happens to be in... That's actually one of the Ganon's Castle items. It means you'll be able to get to Ganon's Castle before doing the Spirit Temple. Because believe it or not, the Shadow Temple is actually doable without the Lens of Truth. Just not easy. This one, the one where it has comp at the end of it, and it's 32, about 32 megabytes. It's exactly 32 megabytes. This is the file you need. This is the only file you need. You will need to open up now. Go to your local disk C. Like, open up this PC. Go to local disk C. Um, and any other, if you're not using Windows, you can just put this anywhere that's accessible, really easily accessible. Because you'll want this for RetroArch. You're going to make a new folder and put ROM, make it, call it ROMs. Move this ROM into it. That's all. Close those out. That's it with patching the randomizer. And you can do the randomizer thing again to make a new seed every time. Now for the big one. RetroArch itself. Once RetroArch is set up and installed, you'll open it, and this is what you'll get. If you have an Xbox One controller, I don't know if this works with a PS4 controller as far as the auto mapping, but if you have an Xbox One or Xbox 360 controller, it automatically has everything mapped for you. So great. If not, just look up tutorials with RetroArch to set up your control. Two things you need to do. First, you need to get a core installed. I already have two installed. Um, you're going to download a core. You're going to go all the way down to N64. Did I skip it already? No. I've had a stupid moment. Oh, here we go. Nintendo 64. There's two. There's Movement 64 Plus and Parallel. Movement 64 Plus, I've had issues with. As far as, like, running things. You'll get random crashes, possibly. Um, Parallel is the best for this. You download Parallel. You, you tap this, and it downloads Parallel right here. There, Parallel's installed, so now you back out, and then you go and load Parallel. Core's loaded. Perfect. Now, before you load the content, there's a couple settings you need to do. Actually, more specifically, you need to do one setting. You go to your video settings, and you make sure that window scale is down to one. I'll show you what happens if you don't do it in just a moment. Well, right now. For loading content, you just hit load content. You go down to the drive C. You just made this ROMs folder, so go to ROMs. And there it is. Docker time randomized ROM. You will then open it, and of course parallel. Here's what happens if you do it without changing that video setting. See the issue here. It's an oversized window. So let me close, whoops, I don't want a screenshot, I want to close content. It'll take me back to the thing. So yeah, in your video settings, sorry again, didn't I? Yeah. Window scale, change it to one. I know you're going to have a hard time seeing this for a moment, that's why I showed you how to load the ROM first. So now let me go back and load the ROM. Of course, parallel. And there you go. It's proper size. It's everything and everything is there perfectly. Size is perfect, running perfect. Now let's pull up this randomizer. There are save files here because of course I've been running randomizers. It's the same same file. So let's make a new file called YouTube. Now, as you see here, the randomizer skips a lot of cutscenes, including when you awaken in the Temple of Time seven years later. So you start with one random spiritual stone or medallion. In this case, you start with the Zora Sapphire. So you have the Zora Sapphire, so you mark that in your tracker. Let me move 
Whoops. I didn't mean to resize that. Hey, don't accidentally do that. Let me get these open. You'll see with the tracker. Let's open this. The random tunic color gave me was like a beige gold like thing. Okay. Let me show you an example. Of how randomized these chests are. When you start, of course, you got the four chests in here. They're all randomized. Normally, they're all, I think, blue rupees. Speaking of which, blue rupee chests are the worst things you can get in this game. Let's open the first chest. Let's see what this item is. Remember, it's completely randomized. And, okay, it's a heart container. So you already have a new heart. Mark that on your tracker. And you open the next chest. You just Every chest is randomized. All quest items you get are randomized for the most part. There are some that aren't. Um, business shrubs that sell upgrades are randomized. That was a piece of heart, so you mark that. Then you open this chest. Look at there, we already got Nar um, Naryu's love. Except you can't use it until you have magic. And then the last chest. <laughs> wow. That's kind of broke. It's the fairy bow. <coughs> so when you switch to adult link, you'll already be able to use the bow. An example of cutscenes being skipped, and of course, open forest, so you're able to exit the forest immediately. This scene is one of those skipped scenes, you just immediately get the ocarina and continue on. The ocarina pickups are not randomized, the master sword is not randomized. So as soon as you turn to adult link, you will have the master sword. Yeah, that's how it basically all works. Now, there is one more thing in RetroArch I need to show you because I did forget just now. Let me close the tracker and move this up. Bring up the RetroArch, move, open, and close the content. Let me also return the video back to times three so y'all can see what I'm doing. Actually, I'll go, I'll go times four so y'all can see it just a little better. Also, by the way, when you change any settings in RetroArch, you need to close RetroArch to apply the settings. And then you can just reopen RetroArch. And the settings changes are there. Because if RetroArch crashes, it doesn't save the change changes. Alright, what you need to do, I believe it is under user interface. It is. These two settings need to be off. Pause menu when activated needs to be off. Don't run in background. It needs to be off. Because if this is off, if it's on, then the game and ROM and everything will completely pause while you're going to move the tracker. And you don't want to do that. You want to keep it running at all times. So you don't have any, like, stopping. That's all there is to it. And honestly, that's all there really is running... The randomizer, and at that point, it's just play. All right, I didn't change the size. <laughs> so let's move this off to the side here, where y'all see the game still. But that's gonna do it for this video. This was a bit of a longer tutorial than I expected, but it's got a lot of information. And the description is gonna have the four links to download that, as well as the Ocarina of Time randomizer Discord server where all of these links also exist and there's also a lot more help if you need help you can ask the people in the discord they're great people they can help you out even further and have a great day everyone